also feel what you do as a designer is is you bring a certain point of view to the field of design. So we've been very lucky to kind of apply that across disciplines to a multitude of products over the years. We did a bunch of bomb, you know, bed sheets for Bombay dyeing. So this is a very interesting collection. It was inspired by all the poisonous yet beautiful creatures that exist in nature. So it was called Toxin. And those poison arrow frogs and the colors were something that happened for bed sheets. There was one inspired by Japan and there was one inspired by the roses from Chiaroscuro. We also done fine gems with, uh, you know, fine jewelry with uh, a brand, uh, you're doing jewelry with diamonds and enamel, as well as food. So you, it's something which you really take across and apply. So I think as a brand owner or as a brand custodian, you know, there's so many, I'd love to do paint, I'd love to do wallpaper. I mean, the, the search is endless. A diversion that happened through the years, uh, again, like I feel like there's something which is controlling us over and above what we choose to do or what we can control, which is the idea of providence maybe. So in 2010, you know, uh, Mrs. Bachchan, uh, uh, who I do personal clothes for in her personal wardrobe, just called and said, will you style an ad for us for a jewelry brand? And that's how I stepped into the world of costume. Now, what's very interesting about costumes is the fact that, uh, you know, uh, when you do fashion, it's with a certain consumer in mind, it's with a certain longevity in mind. What you're doing through costume is you're telling the idea of storytelling through the clothes. It's taking a known actor and converting them into a character so that the audience can step with greater realism into the world of that film. That's what you're trying to do through costume. So these are some of the work I've done with them over the years. Again, Marathi films happened luck by chance. So, you know, I, like I was speaking to, you know, uh, a few people before this talk began is, it's just keeping an open mind and stepping into it, you know, where you, uh, why not? And I think that is a, a question if you can kind of ask yourself a lot more doors open than, you know, locking the door yourself and saying, this is not me and that is not me with, with preconceived ideas. So there's a very cult Marathi play called Katyar Karzad Gusli, which was being made into a film. And they called me literally three weeks before filming and said, you know, will you help us with costumes? And my first question was, why me? I mean, like, you know, I had not done those kind of costumes till date, but it just happened. And that film was something which is still talked about and celebrated. Another Marathi film happened, which was a biopic on an actor in the 60s. And then uh, I ended up doing costumes for a film called Tanaji the Unsung Warrior, which was based on the Maratha warrior Tanaji Malusare. And uh, it was amazing because, you know, I think a film hinges on the creative vision of the director and what freedom he gives you. To, because you're talking of actors like, say, Ajay Devgan, Kajol, Saif Ali Khan, who we've seen over decades in different avatars. And how do you take them and make a film where you are convincing an audience for two hours that they are really in the 1600s and they are these people and they have these motivations and they have all of these thoughts. That's where costume comes in because you're transforming actors into characters. And this was a very, in, it was a very gratifying project because I've always been a student of craft and a film like this just to kind of take you through the process and the numbers. So like these were the ideation boards of, you know, you're, you're talking about an era when there was nothing, like, there is no photography. So there is nobody who can prove or disprove how things were. There were paintings. So you, you, you know, it's really somebody's interpretation but that's the closest that you'll get in terms of reference of how the world was and you're you know really dealing with a country where there is so much craft and such an abundance of wealth and so much time that you're trying to tell in this short film world that you're trying to do so this was for tanaji and savitri who's uh, you know who are the lead pair and those were what the costumes looked like this was a very challenging character to do because you know uh, shivaji maharaj is somebody who's like god to a lot of indians and the the great part and the scary part about doing a film like this is for for decades from here on this is what becomes a trademark for all the people in terms of how this character looked so i visited museums in india and abroad so we did kelkar museum in pune i went to salar jung in hyderabad i did crafts museum in delhi calico in ahmedabad uh, you know the uh, museum in mumbai uh, the i even pestered the people at the victor and albert museum to open their walls and show me stuff that they had from the actual Mughal eras. And I can't tell you what a goosebump inducing feeling it is to hold a piece of textile that has actually been made in the 1600s in our country. And a project like this, I think what has been very, very gratifying is I was able to work with weavers and craftspeople from across the country. So whether it is we developed saris in, uh, in Dharwad, which were the Ilkal saris, we did Chanderi, we did Maheshwari, we did brocades. For the men, we looked at fabric uh, Aurangzeb from all across the Silk Route. So whether it's ikats, it's brocades, 
there were there was realism but there was also cinematic grandeur and beauty and both need to be balanced for creating the jewelry for kajol's character we i you know i traced down a jeweler who is in kolhapur whose ancestral family has been working with uh, the court of shivaji maharaj and creating jewelry from 400 year old molds so we recreated pure gold jewelry using those molds and put it in the film rather than just going with a brand partner or there were people who worked with you know armor as it was done in those centuries and kind of brought all of that to the table this was a sketch and that's of course how the film looked i was very lucky to get the national award just two weeks ago for this so that was a i don't know and what was most amazing is is two things one is the fact that uh this award would not have been possible without the literally thousands of people who worked on the film so whether you talk of the weavers the jewelers the crafts people also people who work on a set was one aspect because it just kind of makes you realize what a wealth of knowledge you have in this country and that we need to be proud of second thing was the fact that it also i feel like film was such an influential medium that a film like this shines light on the abundance of heritage that we have and in an era where there is so much of you know uh, globalization and which is a great thing but there it also kind of we are probably one of the last few countries in the world where historic costume or even something which we take for granted like the sari is still relevant and worn today and if it can bring attention to that at a larger level i think that that becomes very point of great influence i have just finished work on this film called adi purush which is a retelling of the ramayan which will be out next year so we will chat about that more in detail then like i said bringing joy to your lives i have been always championing the handmade and the handcrafted and that is what makes the clothes special that is what makes the clothes something that you want to hold on to and not be disposable we do stuff for brides and grooms and you know and another important thing that i really feel that sometimes fashion doesn't get is you know what are clothes they they are, they are only of relevance if you wear them if they are on your body and that's something but most importantly what clothes do is they are milestones of the important moments in your life so you always i mean you know you don't buy these clothes to uh, you know go grocery shopping and i mean you can but you don't so they are really for you know commemorating a birthday an achievement a milestone you know like a wedding and and they become markers of that as you go along in the journey of life you know we, we what are we we are essentially uh, crucibles of memories you know and and if fashion can be a, a a tool to kind of aid and make that process more cherished then that's something which i think is a is a purpose well achieved this is what we do with the brand we've also covid has also been an important time for all of us to introspect and it has really made me realize which was perhaps at an informal level earlier as to how you know alike we are as people and as increasingly indians kind of are spread out through the world uh, whether it's a woman living in la an indian woman perhaps or somebody here thoughts are similar influences are similar so we wanted to kind of use this period to take our brand to a larger audience so we built the website ourselves we marketed it ourselves and that's what it looks like now you know it was a massive learning for me as an entrepreneur as well in terms of apart from the design aspect of it the logistics the the systems putting together a team for it and a million challenges which continue every day i mean you know like so but it it's a very rewarding process to for any creative person to you know have your product and your point of view resonated and validated by who you're creating it for democratic design to your doorstep so i have always believed that you know fashion should be like a warm big happy embrace we can't be you can't sit with us and you can't do this and you can't do that now i'll just illustrate this dress so this is a dress from the new collection which was worn by somebody who is living in bombay is a certain size is a certain body type and then very interestingly these two friends they both live in california uh, you know her daughter was getting married in tuscany so they actually discovered us through instagram and Uh, you know we did virtual e consultations and they both the friends bought matching outfits to wear for the for the uh, one of their daughters uh, who got married in tuscany i mean like geographical boundaries don't exist anymore you know jimmy also said that and i fully resonate with that thought because today i think if there are any boundaries they are really boundaries of the mind they are boundaries of ideologies it, uh, the physicality is irrelevant i mean you know we can be face timing with somebody sitting in auckland and at the same time on a group chat have somebody who's in kenya so it's really 
what, what are today we are forming our newer communities based on our thought process and our mindset. Now, this is an example of somebody who wanted to kind of, again, like each of these are handcrafted and made. So the, the stole on the right is made using, uh, you know, petani fabric, which is all pure gold zari woven in a part of Maharashtra. The others are embroidery, traditional thread work. So it's like a confluence of all cultures across the world being worn for a wedding. Again, we do like, you know, uh, everybody come with us. So it's grandmothers, mothers and daughters. You know, it's, it's I, I don't think when you see a lot of brands across the world and People always have this marketing fund. I know who's your target customer and is she this age and is she that age? And, and I think, why not? I mean, you know, everybody's welcome. Whether it's for different occasions, different body types, different kinds of people. I mean, we are very lucky as designer. So my, like I said, my, everybody in my family is a doctor and we do share people who know each, you know, we cater to in commonality. My dad always says, they call me when there's a problem. So it's a problem when their phone rings. They always call me for a celebration. <laughs> so I'm the lucky one. Like I always get calls when there's a happy thing going on. He always gets a stressful call regarding the same. Kids wear, why not? Couple capers. So as you know, I said, while we are here talking to an audience and I don't want to kind of be the high preacher of fashion. I think uh, if there are a few, in, you know, takeaways that all of us can have from this in terms of how to style each other for a, uh, for a special occasion how to be, you know, complement each other as a couple and not yet kind of match. I thought I'll take you through a few pictures and just, uh, you know, run you through ideas. So this was from that uh, first ad that I did. But again, if you see here, for a festive occasion, they're in the same color palette. Uh, her sari is actually a take on the Parsi Gara. And it is with embroidered all with ombre dyed silk ribbons. So the whole sari takes about, again, I think... Uh, 230 hours or something of embroidery to do, but it's a design classic. I mean, that's something which, uh, you know, as time goes by and as it, it's something you can wear. For me, nothing gives you more joy than a garment which is pulled out 10 years later and reworn because it's not only telling you the story of that garment, it's telling you the story of your journey through those 10 years. These are again couples that we styled, you know, in ways. So a lot of times people ask me, you know, hey, me and my wife are going for a wedding. Like, how do you want to look? I mean, you don't want to look like the Beckhams or twinning in head to toe, you know, I mean, like that, that's just not a fun look on Indians. But whether it's complementary colors, so we gave her a lovely plum color lehenga and he has got little plum color detailing all over the bangala and the pocket square. There's red and gray done in ways that works here. Again, like I said, for the same wedding. So the sari on the left was a very interesting brief. So this lady wanted a sari which compliments so the groom's family is from Gujarat and they are Maharashtrians. And she said, I really want to fuse the two. And me obviously being a craft junkie wanted to kind of, it was my, you know, manna from heaven because I wanted to kind of merge in as much as we could. So we took a lovely ikat and did the Gujarati Rabari mirror work. And with that, you know, draped it in a Navari style. So it was the first time that there was a confluence of these two styles done for her. And for him again, there were, there was the petani stole and we did beautiful hand embroidered thread work Popat, so parrots on his kurta all over. Another couple who wanted something for a cocktail. So he was much more outgoing and flamboyant. So we gave him a fully hand beaded bangala kind of a jacket. And for her, it was a more tonal classy black outfit. Again, here, that's my wife. So as you can see, so like it's black on black. There is, you know, a sense of elements of what we are trying to do. Don't, so just quick few tips if I had to kind of sum it up. One would be that do not try and match exactly. Secondly, a lot of people have this sense, you know, what is fashion or, you know, how do I kind of, is this on trend? Like, it's almost as if you know, you're taking a prescription from a doctor and it's not, you know, trust me, it won't bite you. I mean, at the most, you'll go a little wrong. So engage with fashion, enjoy it. Maybe, and really the idea of trends when you talk about, I think trends are redundant. There's a micro trend every second. You can say, oh, pink is in fashion. And then Beyonce wears like a lime green and oh, lime green is in fashion and something else happens. So. I'll come to this, which is very important. This is one of my favorite quotes. So, fashions fade, style is eternal. I think the aim, you know, the fashion industry would want you to, or has for decades wanted you to say, oh, this bag is last season and let's buy new season and let's buy this and let's buy that. I'm going to take that idea and turn it around on its head and say, hey, you don't need to kind of, uh, you know, dis what is being said develop something fashion is just a tool it's like you know it's like learning photoshop or it's like learning how to drive where that takes you is is your call it's it's a it's a decision you have to make you have to discover yourself through this process and this journey 
and understand what is it that is tickling your what is it that is making you feel most like yourself i mean you know because it works on like i've had women who've come before and said oh you know i have seen this xyz on a celebrity that you have made make it for me and i you know i have point blank refused because i'm like that works on her because she looks like that and that's her lifestyle her body type her skin tone and that's the best version of her what you need to do is like look like the best version of you and i think if that is a funda which can be kept in place when you're shopping it really helps another important tip i would say is you know it's, it's a very simple tip but a lot of us don't realize we kind of are shooting things with a phone all day when you're stepping out take a picture of yourself head to toe in that outfit you know your eyes lie because if uh, this is the exercise all of you can try is when you're looking you're only focusing on one point you can never see the whole image head to toe in one go and for that objectivity and detachment always take a picture of yourself to see whether, whether it works can take a front and a back see what is working on you and thirdly and most importantly i think buy less but buy better you know i mean i think this is something that uh, as we all go along in life you know we kind of look at with we settle into our own self but buy fewer nicer things make those things work really hard for you like this jacket i think is 5 years old but it was again inspired from the tulip mania collection which i showed you with the insects and the beetles and you know all of that but it's it works for me i mean it makes me feel great it's it's something so and i can mix it up i can dress it up dress it down wear it with a kurta so buy fewer nicer things buy things that you can kind of curate and make your own recipe for your own version of style i think that's really important and another important thing i would kind of say is you know be open to questioning like there's a lot of time when a lot of us fall into a style rut where we feel like there's only like this is what works for me and and every few years you know because you have changed you can't be the same person you were 5 years ago why should your wardrobe look the same so keep that in mind i mean there's enough of information online there's there's and designers don't bite we can you know we're always happy to engage and kind of uh, you know make you find the best version of what you do Thank you.